Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to you on this Sunday, the 16th of June, uh, just about mid-year. Well, um, we begin with these words from Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 14 to 16, which says, Those who are led by God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Wonderful words to begin our service with. And so we come to our Father God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, Lord of heaven and earth, we come into your awesome presence to offer you the praise of our lips and the love in our hearts. You call us to this place to be your holy people. And so we join together to praise your name. For the joy of your created world. For our redemption in Christ our Lord. And for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, we worship you. Gracious Lord, fill this place with your presence and our lives with your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we come now to confess our sins to God. Let's pray. God of mercy and love, we come before you in need of forgiveness. We've sinned against you in not loving you with our whole heart, in not serving you with all our strength, in not loving our neighbour as ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, that we might be your joyful people once again. In Jesus' name. Amen. The scriptures tell us that God is merciful and kind, slow to anger and abounding in love. So hear his words of pardon. Your sins are forgiven. Receive his gift of forgiveness and be at peace. Amen. Now, before we come to today's reading, uh, just some notices for today. Uh, later uh, today, this afternoon, there is an infant baptism. Um, and also that the Alpha course in Farsi begins tomorrow evening at 7.30. Uh, also, to let you know, it's in the um, in both Orp News, uh, the All Angels Federation, that's at St Michael's and Glover Hill Infant Schools, they're having their summer fair on Saturday the 22nd of June between 12 and 3, and uh, that is at Clover Hill Infant School. So please do support uh, that by going along. Also, a reminder that this month, in a couple of weeks' time, our fifth Sunday charity is for uh, medical detection dogs. Next week, Christine will say something about this charity in church. So if you want to give um, towards medical detection dogs, Christine will be saying something next week. And hopefully I will say something uh, for the recording uh, next week or the week after. Also to let you know that Sunday the 30th of June at 6.30 in the evening, uh, we have a service led by the Quakers. The following week, we have a picnic lunch after the Sunday service on the 7th of July. And the 14th of July is a baptism service of Andy Bristow. So, and if you want to be baptised, if you haven't been baptised, then please do come and see me. A lot of notices. And if you're watching this recording, you can always go back and uh, repeat those so you don't lose out on all that's just been said. Well, we come to our reading from Scripture, and before I read, let's pray. Most gracious God, we thank you that all Scripture 
is God breathed and useful for our growth in faith. Lord, as we hear the words of scripture read today, may we grow close to you and hear your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, our reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 15 and verses 11 to 32, a very familiar reading. So Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? Until I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms round him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the elder son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The elder brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you, and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat, so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me. And everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Father's Day. And on this Father's Day, we know that many people struggle with the idea that God is a father. Many people struggle because of their experience with their earthly father. Maybe he was abusive, rude, 
overly critical, self-centered, uncaring, or maybe simply just absent. Now, of course, there are plenty of good fathers, but there are and have been plenty of bad ones too. So for many people, especially among feminist theologians, the idea of God as our father is a barrier to getting to know the God revealed in scripture. Now the character of God as father is primarily revealed in the teaching of Jesus as recorded in the Gospels. It's here for the first time that God is revealed as father, the father of the believer, and not just father of the nation, i.e. Israel. That revelation as God is our father comes from Jesus himself. We read in the Garden of Gethsemane, for example, that when Jesus prayed, he called God Abba, Father. Now the term, term Abba uh, came way before the Swedish pop group. In the language of Jesus, that's Aramaic, the term Abba was the name a respectful child would give to their father at every stage of their life. It's equivalent in modern English, I suppose, of the word Papa. It speaks of affectionate respect. Now, some people have thought of Abba, meaning Daddy. But most people today don't call their father Daddy when they've grown up. I remember calling my dad Daddy when I was a child, when a young child at that. But as I grew up, I went to... You know, in my teenage years and older, I call him dad. So this idea of uh, Abba, meaning daddy, it's more like papa, respectful, a respectful way of speaking of your father, respectful, but affectionate. And Jesus used this term both in private prayer and in teaching his disciples about God. And some have seen this as maybe one of the most important features of Jesus' teaching. He reveals to us who God is. The basis of this divine fatherhood of all believers is, of course, the fatherhood of Christ, or well, God the Father's fatherhood of Christ, that is. We as believers have been adopted into God's family through faith in Christ, as we read about in both Romans 8 and in Ephesians chapter 1. Now, in saying all that as a preliminary to what I'm about to say, let's Turn now to our reading from Scripture, Luke chapter 15. Of course, the par parable of the prodigal son, or the parable of the lost son, as it's called in the New International Version. Now, I have to take issue with that, because in many modern Bibles, the passage is headed the parable of the lost son. Or, in older parlance, the parable of the prodigal son. And many see in this parable that Jesus told uh, that the central character in the parable is the younger son. But in this parable, along with the two previous parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin, the emphasis is on, is on the person who loses, not the thing that was lost. So the shepherd loses a sheep, the woman loses a coin, and here the father loses a son. The parable begins with the words, there was a man who had two sons. It is the father who is the central character in this parable. 
It is the Father whom Jesus wants us to notice. It is the Father's pain inflicted on him by his younger son's recklessness. And, dare I add, the older son's pride that Jesus means us to see. It's the Father's joy when the younger son returns that Jesus wants us to notice. So this really, in fact, should be entitled The Parable of the Waiting Father. Now, what else does Jesus want us to see in this parable about God, our Father? Well, the context for this parable is that tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered to themselves, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. We see that in verse two. They thought Jesus was acting in an ungodly way. So Jesus responded with these three famous parables in Luke 15. Jesus says that God doesn't write off people because they're lost to him. God loves the sinner before he repents of his sin, which is why when he does repent, God is eager to welcome him back into the family, to forgive him and celebrate with him. Now, when the lost son had reached his lowest point, which is in the pig pen, when he's so hungry that he even wants to eat the pig food, and no one will give him anything. And just think, for a Jewish audience, Jesus is telling this story to Jews. What would be worse than sitting in a pig pen, tending pigs, even wanting to eat their food? This is the lowest of the low. But at this point, when he'd reached his lowest point, the younger son decided he would be better off at home as a slave. And so Jesus tells us in the parable, so he got up and went to his father. It was to his father that he went, not to his home, not to his village, or even to his family, but to his father. And as the son walked to his father, he rehearsed his speech. And those listening to Jesus uh, tell this parable would have expected the father to refuse to welcome his younger son because he had disgraced his family. Think about Middle Eastern families today. The whole thing of honour and shame is strong in the Middle East. And Jesus lived in an honour and shame society. People would have been expecting the father to kick his son out, to have nothing to do with him, to effectively say, you're dead to me. Now, I once ran away from home when I was, I think, about 10 years old. It was actually when my step grandmother was visiting from Sweden. I can't remember now why I ran away. But an hour out or so, I felt so guilty about upsetting my step grandmother and upsetting my mum for that reason, that I took my pocket money out of my pocket and went and bought a pot plant and went home kind of with my tail between my legs. Um, I went home partly as I was getting hungry. I did not receive the welcome I expected, I have to say. My mum, in her wisdom, rather than saying, where have you been? We've been worried sick about you. She simply said, how kind of you to buy granny a plant. She didn't bawl me out. And it was my hunger and my guilt that drove me home. And this is what, in fact, happened with the younger son. It is his hunger and guilt which drives him 
home. And the parable continues, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Now that's not uh, a response that Jesus' hearers would have expected. In the same way that I kind of expected my mum to bore me out, and she didn't. Maybe in her wisdom she knew better. Maybe, I can't remember, maybe I hadn't been gone that long, and she wasn't that worried. It was the 1970s after all. But we see here in verse 20, an amazing response from the father to his son. You see, it says while he was still a long way off, some distance away, his father saw him, which says his father was looking out for him. His father cared. And when his father saw him, he wasn't angry. He was filled with compassion. And then he did something that Middle Eastern men would never do. He ran to his son. Middle Eastern men do not run. They walk, especially in that heat. Well, here, you know, there is compassion. Now, someone who has disgraced the family in Middle Eastern culture would not normally have expected compassion. Someone who squandered the family wealth and brought dishonour to the family name would not have expected compassion. Most Middle Eastern fathers would not have reacted like this father in the parable. But that's the whole point of the parable. It's not about a human father at all. It's about a heavenly father. Here we see the passion in the father heart of God. A love that will not give in to despair or revenge, or take or hate, a love that longs to forgive. No, the son never got to finish his speech. His father interrupted him with joy. That his lost son was home was a reason to celebrate. And his father called for three gifts, a robe, a ring, and shoes. The robe, in fact, the best robe was called. You know, that was a mark of high honour, much like the robe that Jacob gave to Joseph. And the ring that was given to him was a mark of authority, used to seal official documents. By giving the ring to the younger son, the father was entrusting his son with full authority in all the matters of his estate. In effect, he was saying, you can act in my name. In other words, I trust you. Even though the younger son has thrown away you know, such trust, his father is now saying, I trust you. And thirdly, Shoes were worn by free people in that society. Slaves went barefoot. Sandals were worn by free people. And by giving shoes to his son, the father was saying, you are free. I'm not taking you back as a slave. I'm welcoming you back as a son. He was a son again. A free man. No more talk of, you know, I've sinned against heaven and against you. you no, know, take me as a slave. None of that. These three gifts, the robe, the ring and the shoes, say you are honoured. You are trusted. And you are welcomed back into the family. Wow. 
what what a parable in this parable we see that jesus ministry of teaching and seeking and saving the lost is in fact the concern of god our father it's god's concern that we are saved that we are who are lost are found we see in this parable the father heart of god who longs for us to come to him whether we are like the foolish younger son who squandered ever, squandered everything or like the older hard-hearted brother the the older hard-hearted son i should say you know both sons need to discover their father's love for them and i wonder maybe you need to do the same this morning maybe you've had a poor or non-existent relationship with your earthly father well today i pray that you'd have a revelation a revelation of the father's love for you that you will grasp the depth of God's love for you. Discover how much he rejoices over you and welcomes you into his embrace. You see, he longs for you to be honoured by being called a child of God. Some of you who've been around quite a long time in the Christian faith, may know the book, The Father Heart of God, a book by Floyd McClung. And in that book, he writes this, our willingness to be used as God's vessels can make his father heart a reality to our hurting world. You see, when we discover God's father heart for us his extraordinary love for us we then can take that good news into a desperate and difficult and hurting world to others who need to experience God's father heart for them but you can't do that until you have discovered God's father heart for you, his great and extraordinary love for you. If you know that love already, then share that love with others. But if you don't know that love already, and it doesn't matter how long you've been going to church, if you do not know just the extent of God's love for you, then you need to pray. Pray for a revelation of his love, that you may know the Father, heart of God for you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, for your love for us, and for your spirit within us. May we honour you this week by making your love known to others. But firstly, Lord, would you make your love known to us? And this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Well, now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with everyone you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve and share the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.